What's up YouTube? I'm Mr. No Name or Max as people know him in the real world and today I'm bringing you guys three different gameplays. Um, MLG Tournament S&D, uh, online free tournament CTF, and uh, hard point that was like from a scrim against the land team or something if I remember correctly. All the gameplays are right about two months old, that's when I quit. Um, so you know those are the latest gameplays that I have. And then uh, they're just parts of the gameplays. Also, the respawns were like some of the first times we played respawn as a team on this game. So, you know, just kind of keep that in mind. We were a little bit behind the curve, but we were adapting very quickly. And uh, we were picking things up very, very quickly. So, you know, I was kind of proud of that fact. So just enjoy that in the background. Now that that's out of the way, let's get down to it real quick. Um, so this video is not nearly as scripted as my other ones have been, except for that first part, obviously. That's pretty standard of me to go through. Um, I, did, I normally have a piece of paper in front of me with points to read off and things, but this one is going to have a much more personal touch. I'm going off of uh, just kind of the top of my head. I've got things organized in my head a little bit, so I'm going to break it into three main sections. Also, so I can give myself a little bit of a, a break from talking, because, you know, I'll go back and edit it a little bit. But first section is going to be why I quit, um, things like that. Second section is going to be, you know, kind of talking about my gaming career, I guess you could say, um, and what gaming kind of meant to me. And then third section will be people that have influenced me um, and how they influenced me, things like that. Um, and of course, that third section, that could go on for like an hour because there's so many different individuals that have, you know, impacted my life as far as gaming is concerned. But, um, you know, I'm just going to kind of go over what I can. I'm, I'm sorry if you're somebody that really did influence me and you're watching this and I didn't get to you, but it's just... I, I can't get to everybody. Also, at the very end, after the game plays, I will be having some pictures going of myself, my teammates, um, the organizations I've been a part of, things like that. So just kind of stick around. And of course, the other two sections, besides the first one I'm going to go over, will be more personal. So it'll be your last and only chance to uh, get to see a more personal side of me. So stick around for the whole video. I know it's long. I'm sorry. I'll try and go as quick as I can. So first section, why I quit. This is the main point of this video because it's what you guys need to know so first thing is that yes I have in fact quit both YouTube and competitive gaming um, this is the last video I'm making for my YouTube channel and it's just really to let you guys know that I'm quitting um, I know I should have done this you know two months ago when I actually quit but I am a terrible person and uh, on top of being busy which isn't any excuse because there's always time I could have done this sooner it's just I I really didn't want to make the video. Um, it, in my mind, this video makes everything a lot more permanent, and that's not something I wanted to do. I don't want to quit. Um, I'd love to keep going. I'd love to, you know, not worry about school or not worry about work or anything and just be like, let's do gaming and let's make this work. But it's just, it's not something I can do. I, I, I can't shy away from my responsibilities. But, um, you know, this video just made it permanent for me, and I just didn't want to do it. So that's that's the only reason I can come up with rationally why I've delayed so long to put it out. So I'm, I'm very sorry for that, uh, for stringing you guys along. So why I quit, first thing, number one, internet. Um, you guys have heard me talk about it. You know, internet's been a huge factor for myself and my team. None of us have ever really had good internet, and my teammates are always spread all over the United States, except for the West Coast. Um, and we've even had some people in Canada and things like that. So very, very difficult. Um, you can imagine what that does in tournament settings and things like that, at least online. And uh, it was just causing us a lot of grief. And I needed to upgrade my internet, but I needed money for that. And I didn't have the money for that because I wasn't winning tournaments. So it was kind of like a, a circle and it wasn't, it wasn't working. And I just, it, I couldn't wind up upgrading my internet. So I couldn't win more tournaments. So I couldn't afford to upgrade the internet sort of thing. Um, so that really sucked, but, uh, you know, I think if it wasn't for the internet, I think maybe something could have come from it in all honesty. Um, you know, if we'd actually been able to do that LAN event instead of it being pushed off, just so many different little things could have happened. But, um, I, I think I'll, I'll go off on a little bit of a tangent here. Um, we really did have what it took, you know, advanced warfare. We were putting in the hours. We were pretty much up to speed with everything. Um, in all honesty, we were ahead of the pros, I would say, in S&D for a while because that's all we played and we were doing the eight hours of it and we were, you know, really going into it and uh, learning everything very, very quickly. 
Um, of course, there were some things they probably knew that we didn't, but, you know, I, I think in general we were pretty much at, up to speed or ahead on that. And then Respawn, we were definitely behind because we didn't play it, but we caught up pretty quick. And uh, just to give you guys an idea, Shox, one of my former teammates here, had connections to a pro player, and he actually wound up teaching the pro player something that we had learned, and uh, we, we wound up seeing that on stream, him using it, and the other pros going, what in the world is that? So it was it was kind of fun to see that we were actually kind of ahead. Um, you, know, you guys know I'm a pretty humble person. In all honesty, I think that we could have placed top 32 at a land. Um, and then after that, I think I would be disappointed placing out of, outside of top 16. Um, th that's just where I thought we were at. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right. But, um, you know, I think we could have done it, especially with a little more practice on respawn. But uh, getting back on topic, so other, other things for why I quit. Um, only other major thing was work and school. That's making me put in 50, 55 hours a week. There's no time for competitive gaming at the level I need. Um, you know, maybe I could get in 30 minutes or an hour a day, something like that. Um, probably not even that, to be honest. Um, I'm, I'm, I get, wind up getting pretty busy. But if I were able to do that, that's still not enough for competitive. Um, I, my skills would deteriorate, and I would just not be very happy with myself. So those, those are the main reasons why I quit, guys. All right, so the next section here is, of course, about my kind of gaming career and what gaming meant to me. And uh, this is probably going to be the most personal section, so you guys are actually going to get to you know, learn some things about me, and it's going to be kind of sappy, and all that fun stuff, so, you know, I don't know how that goes over with the competitive gaming community, because that's not necessarily what we are, we're not, you know, super emotional beings or whatever, I don't know, whatever, just stick around, just listen, so, um, you know, I've told you guys, I'm, I'm going to talk about what, what kind of got me into gaming, um, to give you that information first, you need a little bit of background information, so, um, I've told you guys before, and for those of you who don't know, I was depressed and even suicidal for a period of time, and um, that was going on when I started gaming. Um, so, and I, I didn't, I never told you guys why I was depressed or suicidal, but I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys now what it was, or at least the main thing that was causing it. Um, the main thing was the fact that I was struggling with my sexuality. Uh, I am in fact gay. And it was something that was very, very scary for me, and I was very much in denial for a long time. I probably I think it took me about four or five years to really come to terms with it. And um, it was just, it was not something that was fun to go through. Um, I didn't feel like I had anybody I could really talk to or anything. Um, I had no idea how my dad would react. Uh, no idea how my brother would react, really. I, I, feel, I felt like he would maybe be okay with it, but I didn't know for sure. And then I knew that my mom wasn't going to take it very well. Um, you know, now that things have happened, it, it did turn out better than I thought. But um, I'll, I'll get into that. So, basically, gaming was my escape um, at the beginning. Uh, I just started playing video games, Call of Duty specifically here. And it was just nice to kind of get away from my worries and troubles for a while. Uh, just to kind of forget about everything. And um, I started getting good at it. I mean, it was just... It, it just kind of picked up from there. Um, you know, I I started playing at the end of Black Ops 1, and then uh, by the end of MW3, I was in the competitive scene. Um, and then Black Ops 2 is when things started to pick up. I got onto a, one really good team, and uh, things didn't work out because I couldn't play as long. And then, thing, and then I got on the team that really changed everything for me, which was Alex's team. Um, at the time, we were Team Mercy, uh, which then turned into Flight, which then turned into Conquest, and which then turned into Iconic. So that's kind of the progression there for you real quick on the rundown. But um, then, of course, I'll, I'll just kind of quickly go over the gaming career, and then I'll fill in some things that happened. Uh, so Black Ops 2 at the very end, that's or not the very end, probably maybe uh, the last third of it is when I finally got on Alex's team and we picked up Levi. Uh, shortly after that and that's when you know I started to be able to really get good friends on you know Call of Duty and things like that and by the end of Black Ops 2 I wound up coming out to Levi I, I guess I'm just gonna fill in things as I go I don't know whatever I've told you guys I don't have a script obviously I don't um, but anyway I came out to Levi at the end of Black Ops 2 and uh, you know I didn't really know what to expect but it, it wound up not being terrible thing it wound up being pretty funny 
actually. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm somebody that really doesn't care about gay jokes or anything like that, as long as you're not meaning to be offensive. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll play along with it. I'll, I'll do whatever. It's fun to to do because it's different, you know? It, it's fun to make fun of it, I guess, as long as it's not meant to be hurtful. But anyway, uh, then of course I had to tell the rest of the team because, you know, it, I just had to. And we wound up doing that. And I've told every teammate since then. And I've told a couple of my fans as well. Um, just if they've played with me sometimes, a teammate let something slip or they just kind of guessed it. So, you know, but... Um, Anyway, after that, I think the team chemistry got a lot better in some ways and a lot worse in other ways. Uh, certain people weren't necessarily as comfortable with it, um, but I, for the most part, everybody was pretty much okay with it. Um, and Ghost, you know, that's when things started picking up for gaming for me. I finally started putting in more hours, um, bumped it up to about four hours for the first, you know, like 75% of Ghost. Um, and at this time, somewhere in there, I think it was probably December, so just just a month or two after, so, somewhere around there, uh, was uh, after Ghost started, was when my mom found out that I was gay. I didn't tell her, she, she found out because uh, she read something. It's not like, oh, she caught me having sex or anything, no. But uh, <laughs> she, she, she read something and she found out that I was, in fact, gay. And, um, you know, at the time, I was pretty upset with her for finding out, but... I, it really did wind up being a good thing because it was something that needed to happen. Um, you know, it was it was something that was causing me a lot of stress and a lot of depression and everything. And just not knowing how she would react, um, it was just a very bad thing for me. And while she still to this day isn't necessarily entirely comfortable with it, like she, she doesn't agree with it, she doesn't think... I, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is she thinks that it's um, it's not a good thing. She you know she she thinks either that it's like a choice or a disease or something like that, which I obviously don't think that's the case. Um, and if just real quick, if any of you actually are struggling with this or you know someone who is and you want some information, um, I might put a couple links in the description to some uh, science articles. And if you got any specific questions, I'll put my email down there as well that you guys can email me at I'll keep everything private but um you know just feel free to do that I am a biology major I know I'm a freshman but I do know a few things so um you know I'll, I'll try and help if any of you have any questions or anything like that anyway that was way off topic but whatever um so where where was I let's see ghost yes my mom found out and uh, that, uh, after she found out, because she didn't react as bad as I thought, because I thought she was going to kick me out of the house, and she didn't do that, um, she wound up, you know, still loving me and everything, just disagreeing, her, her idea is disagreeing with the lifestyle, I guess you could say, so, things are still a little bit rocky, but it got a lot better, and it was for the best, because now I'm not nearly as depressed, and I'm definitely not suicidal, so it was, it was a very good step in the right direction, and um, that kind of started letting me focus more on gaming, I guess. It, I started turning it more into a career type thing. Uh, YouTube started getting a lot bigger for me. Um, you know, I never got huge, of course, obviously, but it was getting pretty good and I was growing pretty fast. And um, just started getting better and better. There were rough patches through Ghost. Um, I'd say Ghost was probably my most developmental year. Um, personally, you know, because I came out, I, uh, I learned a lot about myself and handling other people as well through various conflicts and things that we had within gaming uh, several big team drama things that you guys heard about and things like that um, and I just kind of learned a lot about people skills and self-confidence and leadership skills and all sorts of things like that but um by the end of Ghost I was kind of burned out I didn't like that game at all um, and I, I took a several month break and then came back to it in time to start getting prepared for Advanced Warfare obviously um, Advanced Warfare comes along and I realize that things have to start really getting serious. Um, I was putting in, you know, like eight hours a day for this game and I, I, I knew I had to start doing something because um, I was, you know, about to turn 18 and everything. Or actually at the time I already was 18, I'm sorry, but I was about to have to start college and get a job and pay bills and everything. Um, and unfortunately, despite my best efforts, I couldn't get to the point where I was earning enough money 
Um, that's what it comes down to, you know, like I wanted to I want to do this I would do this if it gave me no money if I had the time um, It's just something I don't have time for I love competing like I said before But I just I wasn't able to do it um, Unfortunately, but throughout all of this, you know, I that's, that's just kind of my gaming career I guess in short and what the major things what gaming really meant for me it to be completely honest gaming in a way truly did kind of save my life because it gave me a safe place which is super ironic considering how homophobic uh call of duty generally is you know the community and everything but i i don't know for me it just worked out pretty good and um it just it really was a, a safe place for me and it just it helped me develop into the person i am today all right so now for this last part after that incredibly weird and sappy part i don't even know what you guys are going to think about all that but um next portion here I don't have very long but is uh, just kind of the people that influenced me and things like that so I guess the main thing is all of my teammates I'm gonna I'm gonna clump them all together and then talk about a few people in specific all of my teammates have really influenced me in various ways um, even negative things that happened because of particular teammates really made me stop and think about myself as a person you know I had there have been some things that have been other people's fault, and there have been some things that have wound up being my fault, and I look back on it, and it just really did teach me uh, life lessons and things like that. And um, I don't know where I'd be without any of them today. All of them have, at some point at least, been very, very supportive of me, and um, you know, just helped me uh, develop and things like that. So I thank them all. Uh, very specifically, of course, Levi has been a very, very good friend to me, uh, teammate for over a year now. Uh, since Black Ops 2, you know, like midway points, that's like a year and a half to two years, something like that. And um, it's just it's just been really, really good. Um, on top of that, let's see, other people. So the flight organization in general, everybody in that, um, Tom, the U.S. manager, David, the leader, uh, Jordan, who one, was one of the graphics artists. Um, you know, those were the three main ones that I was close to in that. But, you know, we're, it was a very tight-knit family. Um, we had the hashtag flight fam as in flight family because that's what we really were We were a secondary family. We were there for each other for each other's personal problems and things like that And it was just a very good community and for those of you who don't know flight has actually returned uh, With some of the original members, so you know things things are looking good for that but um and then another person um, Miss Clarity or uh, Kennedy she was a, a pretty good friend of mine. We met her in Ghost, and she was uh, she was hosting some of the free tournaments that we would play in, and she would watch us and listen in and things like that. And uh, we wound up becoming pretty close. Me and her were became we were like meant for each other almost sort of thing, except that I'm I'm gay, so it doesn't work. But and she's a lot younger, but um, well not a lot younger, just a few years younger. But anyway, we we just kind of clicked and everything was working. Um, and, you know, she's she's someone that I, I like to play other games with as well and things. And we just seem to jive really well. Um, and she was just a, a very good friend and very good supporter of me for a while. So, um, you know. And then, let's see, other people. There's been so many people. I guess now let me talk. Because I've, I've kind of clumped some of the main people. Uh, let me talk about a couple of, of YouTubers that have really um, influenced me in the gaming community. First person, I'm not going to give out his name because I, I don't know if he really is okay with everybody talking about it but um it happened a few years ago uh he was semi-pro slash pro in the call of duty scene and um he kind of got ousted from the community because he was gay but just kind of the way he handled things and just kind of moved on he he really impacted me and he was like the only gay role model i had in the gaming community so he he was a big influence um some of you may know who i'm talking about um, but I'm, I'm not going to specifically give away that information right now. Um, and then the other main person, I guess really all the pros have influenced me in their own ways. But I really uh, kind of felt like I, I learned a lot from Nadeshot in particular. I know big YouTuber, like the biggest competitive um, Call of Duty gamer. Of course I mentioned him. But uh, just kind of his attitude and his personality and his work ethic and things like that. Um, you know, just kind of influenced me to be a better person and to be more dedicated and things like that. So, sorry about that abrupt cut there. My dog started barking. I don't know how that's going to edit out, but, um, I've redone this video like 15 times now. 
so I'm not doing it again um, because I've just got to do it and it's, it's I just keep nitpicking but anyway last group I wanted to mention was of course the YouTube community and my fans you guys have been absolutely amazing you were you guys were another huge factor that brought me out of my depression somewhat and um, just seeing how much I was apparently able to affect some of you guys um, you know a lot of you were just really grateful but some of you even went as far as being as being inspired by me and things like that and um, you know some of some of you guys have been starstruck actually meeting me and things in an online setting and I just think that's so cool um, I'm, I'm glad to have been able to help you guys out and to be a part of y'all's uh, careers and things like that or just your your hobby if it's your hobby um, things like that so you guys have meant so much to me thank you guys so much and um, as I go here I'm gonna deviate from my outro so don't worry about that but I just wanted to mention to you guys to um, you know chase your dreams uh, learn from my mistakes for those of you who've been watching you know look at what what happened to me and everything and just kind of learn from it um, and you know just be smart about everything um, and I hope you guys have uh, a good life and um, good gaming careers slash hobbies and um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just glad to have been a part of it, so, I, I don't know, I don't know what to say at the end here, but, um, just, goodbye and good luck.